So I've got this plant. It's a, uh, a little lime tree, one of these little miniature trees. And I've got it in a pot because I really never have figured out you know, if I want to plant it in the yard or if I'm going to move it or anything else. So it just kind of sits there. And sometimes if I take a trip during the summer, I'll be gone for a week or so. And it seems like that little plant will get stressed. It'll dry out and then it just drops all its fruit. And so it's been a couple years actually since I've gotten any fruit off of this tree. And so this year I was determined not to let that happen. And so I decided that I was going to get some moisture sensors because, you know, now that I've got all this uh, home assistant stuff set up, you know, it'd be really easy to integrate that. So I go over to Amazon and I get one of these Plaid Systems Spruce Irrigation Soil Moisture Sensors. It's pretty expensive, but I think, you know, hey, if it works, it's worth it. And it doesn't. It sucks. It disconnects really quickly and it never reconnects. And so... I ended up sending it back. And so I got a second Zigbee soil moisture sensor. And this one's kind of a, it's developed with Tuya and it also sucks and disconnects all the time. And so I decided, screw it. I'm just going to make my own. I'm going to use Wi-Fi. That way range isn't as big a problem. And it's a very simple little project. I got capacitive uh, soil moisture sensors from Amazon. Um, picked up a, a lithium battery and I'm using a, uh, a C Zhao again. So one of the little C3 uh, seed jowls, and I designed a little enclosure in Fusion, 3D printed it out, you know, test fit everything, got it all kind of calibrated because that sensor, uh, the way it works, it just spits out voltage and you just want to calibrate between zero and 100, just mapping the correct voltages. Um, and that was pretty straightforward. And then I realized that my, uh, my little enclosure was a little too small during testing, but it, it did work out. And so... Um, at that point, I just kind of put everything together. And so the way this thing is working, again, very simple. I've just got the battery wired in with a voltage divider going to one of the analog pins to measure the battery voltage. The sensor just has a, um, a VCC power in, a ground, and then a sensor pin that you also put to an analog pin on the Zhao. And that's it. That's all the wiring there is. There's just two things. Um, so I did end up, again, designing and 3D printing a little bit bigger of an enclosure with uh, coarser threads so it was easier to use. Um, put that all together. I then used a little bit of uh, silicone in the top just to make a bit of a gasket. Um, smoothed it out with a guitar pick just to make it a little smoother to seal up against the top whenever I screw it in good and tight. I then put together some two-part epoxy and epoxied the... Uh, the sensor into the bottom because whenever you push it in, uh, it will either push up and I'm just trying to make it, you know, a little bit more water resistant because it is going to be in a flower pot that um, I've got irrigated and it'll be outdoors in the rain and stuff. And so I don't know that I'll be able to get it totally waterproof, but hopefully it won't be shorting out during uh, the rain or anything. It's so got that all epoxied in and then I put the rest of the internals uh, into the enclosure. And, you know, if you've watched one of my projects before, hot glue probably going to get featured. Um, hot glued that into place just so um, whenever I open it up to recharge the battery, um, it doesn't push everything around. And so I hot glued uh, the internals in, put it all together, and then time for the full test. I put it into the pot and went into Home Assistant and yeah, just works. You know, ESP Home really does make it very simple to put together uh, straightforward, you know, just little sensor projects. And so because I know some people will probably wonder, here's what the configuration looks like. It's small enough that I will probably just paste this into the uh, the description of the video because um, very straightforward. Um, you just set everything up as kind of typical. Um, get your name. I am using uh, a static IP fast connect uh, Wi-Fi setup. But other than that, you're just going to configure the uh, the soil moisture, the capacitive sensor and the uh, the battery monitor. And that's about it. Um, so for the soil moisture sensor itself, I've got it set up as a uh, moisture device class with a percentage unit of measurement. So I'm going to be translating voltage into percent. Got the attenuation set up uh, as 11 dB because that's pretty typical for these ESP32s. So to calibrate, so I've got a linear mapping. So the uh, highest reading, 100%, will be 1.45 volts. And I tested this by just putting the sensor into a cup of water. 
Um, and then the lowest value of 0% is just, you know, leave the sensor in dry air and just watch the voltage on those. And so then you can use this little calibrate linear and tell it where to map those and it will just uh, interpolate between those two values. Uh, then I'm using a little lambda that will say, hey, if any value is outside of this range, um, you know, if X turns negative, just return zero. So, so map anything uh, above 2.821 volts to zero and anything below 1.45 volts will return 100. That way it does, uh, you know, cap zero to 100 range. Um, and then for the battery life, um, I'm also using percentages. I'm telling uh, Home Assistant that it's a battery, again, attenuation. Here I've got to multiply the output by two because I'm using a uh, voltage divider to measure that with an analog pin. Um, and then I'm using a polynomial mapping. And I may make another video about how to do a kind of more accurate battery system than just doing like a linear or a table lookup, although those do have their advantages. Table lookups especially are pretty accurate and they are fast. Um, polynomials can use a bit more processing power and so they're not always the best option. But I, I may talk about how I figured out these breakpoints, but basically with this, I'm using a fourth degree polynomial um, to map the values and so uh, this is the voltage, and it says, hey, with this voltage from the battery, map to this percentage value. And so I've got that all set up again with the lambda to make sure that it caps out at 100 um, or zero on the bottom end. I also am outputting just the straight battery voltage on a second sensor. And then I've got a little deep sleep setting where this thing only turns on for 10 seconds, and then it sleeps for another six hours pretty much. So basically, I've got this thing set to wake up um, four times a day to update me because it really doesn't need to be that often. And since it's Wi-Fi, I am not going to be getting nearly as good of battery life um, as you do usually from those Zigbee systems because those things are very optimized and this really isn't. So, you know, I put a fairly large battery in this. It's like 1200 milliamp hours. And so I'm kind of hoping that I only have to charge this once a month, but we'll see how that goes. So anyway, that's really all there is to it. It works. It's very straightforward. Um, just thought I'd, I'd show you kind of, a, you know, one of the nice things about Home Assistant and ESP Home for just putting together a very quick project for handling kind of a real problem. Because now I can always tell um, if that uh, tree is drying out and make sure and water it. Although I also have at this point ran uh, drip irrigation, so it's less of a concern than I used to have. But Anyway, if you got any questions or feedback, uh, feel free to leave it below. As always, I appreciate your time.